Where's James? Hello, mate. <laughs> ah, James is back <laughs> for a limited period only by popular demand. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder where you find a hide up here. Yeah? <laughs> um, what's going on? Right. So we've got some lead flashing. Which this, so this extension has been built, uh, just a single story kitchen extension. And the lead flashing was put in right at last knockings. But really, uh, it's been done really badly. Uh, one major problem is there's a set of uh, French doors there. Nothing was done before the roof was put on. No arrangements were made to be tucking any lead in underneath the sill. There's nothing. So literally, the GRP just tucks up underneath the sill. So any snowfall of more than two inches is probably going to seep in. Got it. Yeah. Um, the lead is only code three. Should yeah. be code four. Yeah. The lengths that they've put them in, I mean, that's that's way more than 1.5 metres. Yeah, which you is, can see it buckling yeah, in the middle so there, yeah, can't you? Yeah, split there. Uh, and we've got a lap here of about three quarters of an inch when it should be Six. four inches, 100 mil. So it's, where's the internal damage then? Um, main, mainly sort of a bit under the doors there and at this end here. Yeah. And uh, we're quite high up where we are here so and it's it's a windy day yeah, as well yeah, but yeah. when it's raining and windy there's a great big hole down the back here it's just fully open so it's just, just pouring in there and there's a big patch here that's wet that's probably the worst bit this is a bit tricky this door isn't yeah. it yeah and this should have been all been dealt with before this roof was put on yeah um, because it's so tight there now yeah now, they, they run this fiberglass up on a bit of a fillet. Yeah, that's it. The fillet's been put in, fiberglass run up, but it's it's loose. I mean, it's not it's not stuck down. No. There, oh so. dear. Straight away. It yeah. looks like they haven't even put a top coat on it, have not they? Not here, no. It's just sort of stopped there. I it's don't... strange. I don't know why that is that they do uh, that. Well, it looks as though they had a big roller. You see, it's all along the edge of the oh, sill. They've just rolled okay. it along the edge and not brushed anything in yeah. there. So I'm thinking we'll probably... It's going to be too much trying to cut anything out under there and we'll probably do more damage than good. Yeah. So we're going to try and seal it up with some lead mate to start. Um, and then we'll cut some lead in and then we'll put a welt on the top and tuck it right up un underneath in there and then give it another seal over the front of the, the lead. Where's the weak holes for this door? They're internal. So yeah. when you open the doors, there's holes inside. Yeah, but where are they draining to? It drains directly onto the sill. Right, so it, does, it gets out under, yeah. That, yeah. under that little bit there. Yeah. Okay, so that's... I, saw, I could see nothing on the face, so I yeah, thought, so okay. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, yeah. if, if they weren't there, then they'd have water pouring in on the floor inside. Sure, okay, so mate, yeah, yeah. We know they're there. All right, well, I mean, I think the best thing, really, from my point of view, would be to say to the customer, you can do that, you can make yeah, that work. That's not a problem. This bit, manage your expectations and yeah. say, you have a go, but if it doesn't work, then the doors have got to come out. Yeah, that's it. And it's got to be done properly. That's yeah. the only way to really do it 100% yeah, yeah. properly. One thing I, I am going to do is I'm going to take this uh, Juliet balcony away. Um, and then when we run these lead in on either side, I just want to cut in and around, just so we can get a cap in over this, just the ends. I'm going to, the lead under here, I'm going to run past either end. And I just want to run that around so that anything that does come down here, there's no chance on this little... Okay. Point here and there, it just yeah. they're very suspect. I mean, there's a lot. There's moisture sitting around here as it is. Yeah, yeah. On this corner, and it's yeah. just basically just been a bit gunked up with a bit of stuff, and it's not really doing anything. And it's only a small job. I'm not taking on building works. So. No, no, you're not back for good. <laughs> no. So normally, I'd like to get the lead in 20 mil into the um, into the brickwork, but yeah. as you can see, what they've done here. It's about six mil, I yeah, reckon. It's barely in there, is it? So that's that's it's actually done better than. I mean, I think that's the power of the sealant, really, that they yeah. got over the top. I think this is a bit of an EWI on this wall, isn't it? It is, um, and it's um, it's cracking like mad. So it's probably got no mesh on it a bit of sand and cement. Yeah, it's quite weak. Yeah, awful.
we're going to put a welt on this piece which is going to tuck underneath the door so that basically means we're folding this top edge right over so how are we going to do that so we need special to special little tool i've got to bend the edge of lead which i've lost well we've got this piece of timber yeah. we just have to fold it over on the edge well we've got plenty to go with because it's it's way longer so we'll probably end up cutting a bit off anyway so 25 we don't if we don't go all the way we can squeeze it right in with a bit of lead mate on the back as well and we can tuck it in with a and that lovely little yellow tool I saw. You're going folding right over or what? Or well, it won't go it fully. Like Once it pushes in, it might fold yeah, it a bit yeah, more. So yeah. we can we can get some lead mate on the back of it. We can get your little yellow chair yeah, chase wedge. Yeah, that's it. There's going to be some people watching who are going to be totally confused with this. That we had a piece of lead that was long enough to go in, in one piece, but we cut it in half. You made a well. Yeah. Why did you do that? Because uh, on code four, you can't use a piece longer than 1.5 meters. Uh, I mean, when the sun hits this stuff, honestly, it, it expands, it contracts. And if you go longer than that, you're gonna find little splits come forming, which yeah. is exactly what they had before. Yeah, so it buckles up because exactly. the expansion is trapped and, it, and it's buckling up and then that, that contracts expands and it does it in the same place yeah. until it splits and then it will split uh, code four means four pound lead doesn't it yeah. four pound per, per square, square foot, foot. Yeah. yeah just for people now so what was thicker. on there before was code three which is again the thinner the lead the shorter the lengths you can use yeah. so on a code three you couldn't even get away with you know one and a half meters so but it's it blows up in the wind and it's just generally yeah. not a good idea. Too lightweight. I don't know. I don't know what you use. You, I suppose just for soakers. Well, what would you use code three for? I can't uh, think of anything really. Taking down the scrapyard, I think. <laughs> <laughs> About it. <laughs> Obviously cheaper, but yeah. That's, well, that's, this you can see that in the whole job, can't you? Yeah, that's, definitely. That's been a consideration. Right, so you're going to smear a bit of um, sealant along the back. Yeah. The old lead mate, as we call it. What I'm it. going to do, I'm going to first of all, I'm going to, I'm going to squirt a bit right up underneath that joint between the yeah. sill and the top of the GRP. Then we'll okay. put a bit on the back of this. Yeah. And then we'll wedge it right up in there. Let's see if we can do it. it that, that piece of GRP is going up on a, on a fillet. It's on a fillet, there. yeah. So, so we can get that up there and we're going to have to, it's going to be difficult, but we've got to try and dress that lead. That's nice, isn't it, when you put the old patination oil on? Oh, it's lovely. Stop all that oxidisation, those white streaks down the lid. Yeah, it looks horrible when you get all that. It just happens so often as well. People just, it's Don't the easiest bother. thing to do. Yeah. And it really makes a difference. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not, quite honestly, you've done your best with this. It's yeah. difficult, isn't it, going back over somebody else's work? I mean, one of the things that gets me is that they've put sand and cement on top of external wall insulation. Yeah. And it's cracking off like mad as it would. So at some point, if you have a mind to do it, come on back and hack all this off and it put needs it. a proper base coat and yeah, I mean, acrylic it's on just, it. But it's cracking everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's all right if it doesn't let the water in, but 
if it starts to get down behind us. That's it, once it's there. Yeah. It's oh, well. Yeah, we can go back now. James, you never wanted to come back to the building industry anyway, no, so... I've got a new business now. <laughs> Making T-shirts. Oh, yeah. All designed by me. Builder's Tea, the original brew. That's great. What's on the back? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, it's got a little logo on the back, so you know it's an authentic one. Exactly, oh, that okay. logo's on the back, yeah. little back label. Beware of imitations. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to get an original. Designer <laughs> label. Brilliant.